Hello, hello. It's Reiko Kovacin here. And let me first check that the video is showing in the group. So I'll just go to my computer for a while to check. Hopefully it will be working. This is something we are going to remake today, or similar, hopefully. Let's see how it turns out. Yay, at least I can see the video in, in the group feed. So if you are seeing and hearing correctly, or can hear anything, please give a thumbs up or or leave a comment so I'll know, know that it's working. Okay, sorry about my head being in the first shot. Started a little bit early, so... Funkar bra! Tak! Tak, Ann Kristin! Perfect. So this is something we are remaking today. It's a little wooden box in the shape of a book. And well, you can see here that there's another like that here. But then there's something that's not a box because I only got two. And for the first stage, I did that already because of the drying time so you don't have to watch me use the heat tool that much so i'm redoing it with this wooden board but it's an, anyway kind of the same stuff whether you are using a box or a journal pad or canvas or whatever so the process is always the same i'm just I was inspired by this little box that I found in a craft store and thought a book of love would be good for kind of Valentine's Day coming here in February. Let me just put the, sorry, the loading thingy here just in case. There should be enough power in my phone, but just to make sure that we don't cut off. So while we are waiting, you can, for example, well, you can always ask, ask me questions, but you can also share where you are from or and in, well, I will say any language, but I only know about four languages, so <laughs> English, Swedish, Finnish, those I can. Better and then some French. But during the live, if you have any questions in like course of the live, for example, about the mediums or, or something, just write them and I'll try to keep an eye on the chat and like always I will go through the comments afterwards so if I miss anything I can then then go back how's the volume level is it okay if I speak in depth this volume or should I use more voice hi Janet from Nebraska Welcome, welcome. If you are just joining, now's the time for a cup of tea. Get your tea ready or then your materials ready if you want to create alongside. Thank you, Janet. Volume is great. Perfect. It's always a question because I, of course, put the volume off from my computer so it doesn't start circulating. So, who's that? 
your birthday is on Valentine's Day. Well, I'm, I will be then early and wish you happy birthday already, Aunt Christine. So you know where to send the beautiful box? Okie dokie. <laughs> Louisville, Kentucky. Well, hello, Jade. This is, well, rather a simple project, really. I'm kind of hoping it looks more complicated than it is, but it's really just, just layering, adhering. The only tricky part in, in my book is the gilding. And I'm thinking I'm going to start with that so it has plenty of drying time. So we are left with a better gilded impression than this one because I was in a hurry when making this. Hello Magdalena! Let me see if I can show some of the details now. I need to come up to see what I'm actually showing because there's the delay. So it's really sparkly, not that pink. Well, there is the colors I'm using are pink, but it's not like just pink. Hey, Dina. Hey, Johanna. Hello, Betty. One minute and then we'll start. The first stage is really, well, maybe I can even start because it's kind of re repetitive. Sorry about my English, it's not my, <laughs> my mother tongue, so hopefully you will understand what I'm trying to say. Let me move some of the stuff away. So, the idea with this box, as it was a books-shaped box already, but, well, wood doesn't look like leather or anything that you'd use to make a book or a book cover. Hello, Fraser. So, I wanted to add some texture to it to make it more look like leather. I'm not sure if I did a good job, but at least there's some texture here. And... Here, for example, I made some kind of binding details. And these are, these dimensional thingies are made using hot glue. So I just piped or pressed hot glue here and then added the, the, the tissue paper or, well, kitchen towel on top to kind of mask it. And the same idea with this one, which I made here, but as you can see, in the end, I ended up covering the whole thing in the sample project. But there is this layer as well. But if you're working with a bigger piece, then you might have some of it showing. So this is just cinnabar modeling paste through a stencil. This one is called wall, uh, windish wallpaper. And then collaging on top. Hello, Kati, Satu. So I did this earlier, so it's solid already. No need to use a heat tool. So I can start collaging on top. Why I'm doing this it, this way is to round these corners up because the modeling paste, hey Pakarita, hey Anne. The modeling paste on itself, it's really well, fine definition. So there's kind of this direct edge. And if I'm thinking of kind of leather, impressed leather or detailed leather, that's probably a little bit rounded. So that's why I'm adding this one on top, kind of make it more blend to the texture. Hi, Joan. So these are just kitchen towel little pieces or TP 
and I'm using soft matte gel to adhere them. So just a regal amount of the gel and kind of brushing so that there's not big lumps in the fine details and then I'm adding this on top. And then comes the hard part. I need to mold the paper around the shapes. Paper is at its most brittle when it's wet. So there's bound to be some wearing and tearing, but that doesn't ma matter because then we get that texture. Why I'm using this soft paper instead of tissue paper is the look. Because this soft paper gives a totally different look than tissue paper, even though it's so delicate. But to me that looked more like paper, the edges or the creases were more, uh, how do you say, abstract, geometrical, whereas this I thought I got more of a, well, lettery look. What I also thought, but it's not showing in the finished project. Oops, it is now we have a lot of coming off. Let me move those aside. Is this little perforation or what is this called that might might kind of replicate the letter look but I need to add so much of the adhesive so it's not coming through now that it's a little bit kind of sticking so now I get these not cool ripping effects. There we go. As you can see, I'm using a really heavy amount of the gel. And then another. That was two layers. This one is just one layer. I tore these apart previously and well kind of testing which one works better. The idea is not to get it totally sleek and slender and without any creases because then it would look like just the wood. But to have some of the texture. But when it starts ripping then you need to kind of wet your brush with the gel again because it starts to stick to the brush rather than to the background and I'm sandwiching it between two layers so there's gel underneath a little bit and then most heavily on top because the paper is so delicate that I can kind of apply the gel through the paper I'm sticking to my brush and I am focused. Oh, yes, I am. Let's add some to the base again. There we go. That's much. I'm guessing you are getting the idea of this so let me move this aside because here we have the same thing done and it's already dried here you can see well let me again get up so i can tell you for example here you can see that there's a little bit of texture here kind of these little greases and also here it's rounding up the details I made using the hot glue. Well, the other option you could do is uh, apply a thick-ish layer of modeling paste, push a 
piece of plastic or something on top and then rip it apart because this look reminds that. That effect you can't get, well, like this effect you can't get with that, but this little kind of ripple effect you can get in various ways. I'm almost all out of soft matte gel. <laughs> Some more. But let's close the lid so we can save that one for later. Then next step, because this doesn't look that pretty, is to add just white gesso on top. What I also did here, there's the modeling paste, kind of embellishment, then the tissue paper or the kitchen towel, and then I adhered this. It's a little frame done in a silicone mold using hot glue. So this one is adhered already because then I can concentrate on the front. As you know, the gel takes a little bit of drying time and as it hot glue, I can't use the heat tool because otherwise I'll melt my <laughs> embellishments. Before the live, I already painted the back and this kind of, well, back of the book with white gesso. I came to a li little bit speed things up so you don't have to see the boring stages that much. Well, I'm not sure if they are boring. They are quite fun when you are doing it, but just watching somebody paint white gesso maybe ain't the thing. Because in a live you can't really speed things up rather than doing them beforehand. So this is just in about white heavy gesso. We're kind of creating the base, priming the thing. Are you all familiar with gesso? Because I'm happy to tell you about the gesso if, if there's somebody who doesn't know it. But if you all are familiar with, with this primer, then yes, you are familiar with gesso. These are acrylic based products, these Finderbar versions. So it's like white acrylic paint but it gives ground for the mediums coming on top. And now that we used a really heavy amount of the gel underneath, it also adds something if you want to use, for example, watercolors to color this little box, then it's easier than on top of the gel because there's the primer. And now I need to use the heat tool just a little. As this is acrylic based product, so it dries really quickly. Not much heat needed, but still some. Then I wanted a weathered look for my kind of white letter. In this stage, the new waxes would be great, but they haven't arrived yet. So I'm using a matte wax charcoal black, but really delicately. And hopefully I'm now applying it really delicately. Whenever I need to be delicate with something, it's easier for me to use my finger than a brush. Because, well, it's not an extension of your arm, it's your arm. 
I'm kind of going around the edges, kind of if you're inking the edges, but this time I'm doing it with the wax. So it's not plain white anymore, but the idea is to give it a little bit of kind of age, like it would, would be a actual litter cover, a little bit of wear and tear. If the black is like too harsh, of course there's other options too. And this one is kind of a pinkish colored book because of the Valentine's Day, like the February thing. But just by changing the colors of the paints you are using, you can really alter the effect. Then you can even match the wax to the color palette, like use a blue or a green tone or even a metallic. But my idea with using this matte wax was kind of make it a little bit shabby looking, a little bit vintage looking. So as you can see, I'm just barely touching with my finger to the high points and then using my other finger to kind of blend it so there's not going to be a dark, dark edge. I'm thinking this is now done. Like I said, this is needed to project because this one was the kind of hardest part. Okay, I just realized that I said that I was going to make this one first. So let's do it now before I forgot again. So again, these embellishments, this one and this one, they are made of hot glue using a silicone mold. These are probably from a redesign, like Prima Mold, but not from Finnabar line. And this one I'm going to turn into silver one. So it doesn't look like much as it is. So I'm adding the gilding glue on top. Just here and there. And then I use a brush to spread it. I think it would be handier if I be a little bit closer at this point. I'm using a little bit wet brush so the sticky gilding glue doesn't stick to my brush that much. No, I'm trying not to get it onto table because otherwise my flakes are going to be sticking to the table as well. All over. And then the idea is that it's a little bit sticky. So if it's too wet, it's not going to work as beautifully as if it's just kind of not like dry adhesive, but almost. And then I'm taking the little leaves, metallic flakes. These are just the silver ones. Because somehow, even though I'm from Finland, and to be honest, I have never eaten or tasted a Hershey's Kiss, but still, it's the era of the internet, so somehow I came to think about those when making my little box, because they would fit marvelously to inside, to be given as a little gift. 
so that's why I chose to go with silver rather than gold. And as you can see, I'm kind of losing now the shape because I'm just sticking delicately the leaves on top and then it can dry for a while. Oops, now we are missing one of the little ones. Put that back to the jar. Because if I would use a brush immediately, hey Papa baby, these wouldn't have time to adhere in place. Remember, you need to have it more like sticky rather than totally wet. Then I take a brush. This is a really soft one. I'm kind of going through the shape, trying to get the flakes to the little grooves. And then I'm leaving it for now. So it can dry a while while we work on the box itself. Because if you are patient enough, you can really get a kind of a, almost a mirror effect with the little metal flakes. Usually I'm not that, <laughs> that good with waiting and patience. But let's see if, if we can get it more, more beautiful than this one. Which is, well, this kind of look like the Hershey case foil because it's not smooth as, as kind of a mirror foil. But yeah, let's continue because then it's just building the composition. For this, I used a chipboard cut in two, so one chipboard <laughs> makes two embellishments. And for adhering, I'm using the heavy gel and just a little palette knife. When making a dimensional composition, you start with the flat layers or the kind of biggest elements. So and then move towards the top or height. So that's, let's add a little bit more there so it will stick the end. Then there's a little heart. This one is done with a cut and embossing folder in presslets, I think these are called. This is just aluminum tape on top of cardstock. And as it's a little bit dimensional, I'm using the leftover from, from the chipboard piece to back it up a little bit. To add a little bit more height and also kind of strengthen this shape so it doesn't give in. Let's see. in a couple, maybe one more. Like I said, this is really simple. And then the heart in place. Other embellishment. Using these molded decorations with hot glue is one of my favorites because you can make as many as you want. Then I 
let's add some of the flowers. These are from older, just Prima flowers from older collections. Move those aside. So, and adhering with the same, same gel, so everything will stay put. Maybe I'll add one there. As you can see, I'm moving quite speedily. I don't allow myself to ponder like maybe too long. I'm not sure if there's such a thing about the placement. Because when you stick something down, you have a decision made and then you need to work around it rather than keeping everything flowing because then you can always juggle things around almost endlessly. So when you have something glued, adhered, then you need to work around it rather than keeping everything just moving around. I'm thinking that's okay for now. Then some rhinestones. These are the Melange Art Pebbles. Again, handy little things that go to a multitude of different projects. I'm adding some gel underneath and then giving it a couple turn to spread it evenly. Although this time I'm then coloring these, they won't stay clear. So it doesn't matter that much if the gel is spread evenly underneath. Maybe one more there. Then I would like to have the teeny tiny ones. Maybe that size. No, still too big. How about that? Oops, it was not upside down. And then maybe this one. Hello, Gabriella. Just let me know if you have any questions. What do you think? One more? No, maybe there. No, too big. So let's go with this one. And then I can't use the heat tool now, at least not heavily, because then my embellishments will actually start melting. So let's check. Let's put this aside for a second. Let's check how our little Hershey kiss is doing. Yeah. It's doing quite good. Okay. Um, I said that I have now gel on my finger and it will stick to my finger. Not good. So now that I left it drying for a while. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up, but it's almost like polished here, this this part. There it's focused. If I would have, I'm thinking my lovely rag, yeah, it's too, too coarse, but you could almost 
buff, I think it's called, with a soft cloth to make it even more shiny. So maybe we'll add that one as well. Now I'm then uh, turn those, the other one that's not looking as pretty into something else. Here we go. Hello, Mishika. The flowers are kind of matching to the colors, so I don't have to use a lot of white gesso, but this this ain't looking the way <laughs> it should. Of course, you could paint these beforehand, prime them before they are adhered. And there's different ways. Some people want to do it beforehand, and I rather do it now. But if I'm working not on a live, I probably would leave this to adhere for a couple of hours, because then I don't have to be that delicate with my brushing, because then the gel would have secured everything in place already. I'm also adding some gesso to the chipboard, even though it's light colored, so it's okayish as it is. But it's kind of, this is really soft paper or chipboard, so it absorbs the colors. So when I'm tr uh, starting to Add colors on top. The really soft chipboard would kind of just um, they would soak in, and maybe the color would be too dark, or I couldn't move it around as easily as it's when it has a couple like a layer of a gesso on top. Also some to the flowers, just a couple of touches of gesso or a paint may transform like a ready, ready-made embellishment, something more like you, more like unique, because you've done something to the embellishments. Then I really light touch to the pebbles as well. I'm not heavily going over, but just giving some tooth for the paints coming on top to grasp on to. Then we have the colors. Following the Hershey's kiss, there's silver and then two different pink tones. This one is Spring Blossom. And then from the Sparks, Butterfly Spells. Both have shine, but this really kind of sparkly color on top is from the Sparks. Wait for the show books to go. Just carefully, not melting the embellishment. Let's start with this. I'm just adding a blob of color 
and then using a wet brush to kind of wick it out or blend it here and there. Some to the flowers, then more to the embellishments. Really haphazard, just, just kind of going with the flow. It's not, not, I'm not thinking too much, just dabbing the paint on, mixing. The different colors. I'm mary, uh, mainly using the two pinks now. And then on top of these, maybe a little bit to the rose, some of the silver, getting a little kind of vintage touch there and then some silver splashes so i'm picking some of the paint mixing it water so it leaves the brush more easily and then just flicking I probably say it in every life I keep because I love splashes that splashes are an easy way to kind of mask the transition between the painted layer and the untreated one. I think this is okay for now. Then again carefully we don't want to melt anything. I'm now thinking this rose is still a little bit too too pink looking all the color that it it's originally so let's add some painty touches to it first in there and then some here does that look okay Corn thank you cornelia shall i do the back as well there's just it's the same thing do you want want to see that again or shall i continue with the next next few steps you can now just decide. I said this was an easy project. Oops. You looking to see if you want to see kind of this step again with the back or shall we move with just finishing steps a couple of sips to the tea yeah if you're just joining this is a really easy project 
just a conversation. I think the biggest impact is the way I add color, which is just slapping it on, so to say, and keeping kind of the color scheme coherent. So I have three colors and I'm just mixing them on top of the project. So everything kind of is blending together. But at least there's no comment that you want to see it again. So let's then wrap the wax. Let me try because adding wax on top of wet surface, it's really hard. So let's see if this is okay. There's some wet paint here. But like I said, I don't dare to use the heat tool too much because this embellishment as well as the frame and this one are made of hot glue. So they will actually melt if I use heavy handedly. Put that one on its side. And this, what I'm now applying is just old silver, the silver wax from the Finnabar line. Especially I want it here. So there's the pink in the grooves and then the silver will come kind of on top. On the highest areas. And that combination is, I'm not sure if if it's same with you, but to me it looks more vintagey because this one really has a little bit of kind of shadow. The silver wax. Just here and there. Hi, Vasilis! Helibodikin täälin koostumus muutu, vaikka joutuu hiukan kosketuksiin veden kanssa. Eikö vaikuta? Öö, vaikuttaa siis, jos mä pistäisin ihan hirveät määrät vettä, koska totta kai se on vesiohenteinen. Eli ohentaa myös, myös sitä. Mutta akrylimaalien siis turvallinen, mihin siis heavy body gel hän on ak akryli, myöskin niissä 30 prosenttia on se, mihin, minkä verran uskaltaa laittaa vettä ilman, että se vaikuttaa kiinnittymiseen oikeastaan juurikaan mitenkään. Sitten jos menee sen päälle, niin sitten tosiaan rupeaa olemaan se kiinnittyminenkin ongelma. Uh, Karita asked about uh, using water with heavy body gel. And doesn't it... Uh, what is the word? Hmm. Dilute. Sorry. <laughs> diluted. So yeah, the answer is yes, because heavy body gel is an acrylic based product. So it's, well, it di you can dilute and wash the uh, brushes with water. But as like any other acrylic product, you can add up to 30% of water without the adhesive part of the acrylic diluting too much. If you add more, then it will start uh, at, mm, affecting how the paint will adhere. And here, when I'm adding the water, it's not up to 30%. And also heavy body gel is really thick gel. Naturally, the ideal would be that to first you make the embellishments or the composition and let it dry. So then after drying, it's, it's uh, like, it's not water resistant, but it doesn't react with water anymore. So in ideal world, that would be, but just be careful how much water you will add. The same applies to the acrylic paints because I'm using a wet brush or water to kind of dilute them and make them move on top of my project. If I add too much, they will not adhere as probably as they should. And well, 
also depends on the surface especially you can what say it in glass or metal or plastic like these non-absorbing surfaces but 30% is the maximum you can dilute at least in most paints without the kind of adhering part or the base being too much diluted okay now Mishika asks something I need to see the translation uh, this spark this isn't this isn't orange this is kind of tea-toned pink vintage pink I would say the color name is butterfly spells I'm hoping I'm coming to the right place now I can see okay yeah I'm thinking I'm okay no there <laughs> but it's a pinkish but with some vintage or tea tone quality so it's it's not orange it and then this paint that looks more like orange it's spring blossoms so it's a peachy pink I'm thinking adding a little bit of pink here but yeah whenever you have the possibility to build the composition and let it dry here in Finland that usually means overnight even then use that better safe than sorry but I've used this kind of technique watering down paints and at least nothing has fallen yet but then I let them dry after the light for example i leave this flat drying of course if i would use a lot of water there's water building underneath the composition and then i would raise it up probably plop everything would fall partly because of the diluted gel and partly because it wasn't dry yet and then let's make a little bow not too big okay now it's lopsided the other one other part is bigger than the other better getting there thank you Vasilius like I said it's really an easy project this kind of chip bar that's kind of a ring formed it naturally guides the eye in and you have kind of an arch to follow with your embellishments and then the bigger pieces always get the full attention so here it's the I'm at least hoping that this really shiny heart draws the eye in but go from flat to the more dimensional versions. Oh, sorry. Now Janet asks if I would water down heavy body gel. I wouldn't water down. I watered down the paints. And by watering down the paints and the gel not yet fully dried, Karita was asking if that water will affect the adhesive, like the heavy body gel, the way it adheres everything. But I wouldn't wouldn't water down heavy body gel at all. It's perfect as the way it is. If you want something softer, if you want a softer bo body, heavy heavy body gel that's softer body okay I now I don't make any sense but the softer version of this would be the 3d gel and then even a softer version of that is then the soft gels if we're talking about the finobar line and there's a place for every gel for collaging light materials like paper 
or tissue paper or even lace, then the soft gels are perfect or for photo transfers and making your own paints and such. Then the 3D gel before the heavy body gel, that was the one to use for compositions and layering and in, like gluing the heavy stuff. And now heavy body gel is the one because it's the thickest. But I used this and the 3D gel kind of side by side. And if you need thick and paint, like you want this oil paint kind of textured paintings, then I would use the 3D gel rather than heavy body because this is so thick that mixing this with a colorant or the acrylic color is probably harder than using the 3D gel. Perfect questions, by the way. Thank you. I'm thinking, do I add it? If I put it there, it kind of blocks that one. Now I'm pondering, which I usually don't do. Oh gosh, where to put it? Maybe I even put it here. What do you think? Placement A or placement B? I know I have a preference, but which one do you like? Kiitos, Tina. Oh, and by the way, if it wasn't clear already, you can ask in any language. I have the chat open and it even translated Spanish, so I can answer. Sanotaan vielä suomeksi, että niin kun Karita ja kysyy, niin siis suomeksi saattaa kai kysyä. Jos menee nyt ohi, niin vastaa sitten myöhemmin. Now there's a tie. There's one A and one B. Just one more answer. Then we can put this either A or B. And then I would adhere this a little bit to the side so it doesn't cover the, the heart on the cover. A or B, A or B. Hi Jutta. A. Okay, now there's two A's. Let's go with A. And now there's two B's. Oh gosh. <laughs> Maybe I need to... Ah, uh, another A. Yes. Now I don't watch this chat before I have actually adhered it to the A placement. Luckily, if I now would need to transfer this, like, no, no, let's put it here. Because of the drying time, it's easy to kind of move things around. But like I said when doing the conversation, I rather just stick things down as early as possible because then it's a decision made and you need to work around it. Of course, it, it depends on the style as well. My friends call me as Speedy Gonzalez. And part of that is that I don't ponder about the composition too much and let the project kind of guide me because then I need I put this one here, then there's something here, and then there's something here, and there's a perfect triangle going. But I'm not building that consciously, let's say. It just flows. And I've tried to do a, pro a project the other way around, where I would ponder each step, like really really made, uh, taking my time and I didn't like the project at all. But it's a matter of how you work and how you want, want to work because if you want to take your time with the embellishments, just do it. 
if you want to be more speedy, then don't think think too much. Go with emotion more than with with your brain. Okay, now it started to be philosophical almost. But yeah, we are done with this really simple little project. After this cover, sorry, cover has dried, I then move to the spine and add a little bit of embellishment there and then the color. So it's all the way through. What doesn't have any colors almost at all is the back, but probably that is going to be on top of the table. So there's just kind of the wax details there. Nothing, nothing more. But if you would do a project that's bound to be like this, then add something to the back cover as well. But yeah. Do you have any more questions? And if you're watching the recording, then by all means add the questions. I will check the chat afterwards as well to see if there's any any questions I need to answer. Thank you, Janet. Thank you all so much for stopping by today. I know I'm a little bit early, but happy Valentine's Day to everyone already. And I'll be seeing you next month with another live. And well, there's different people keeping lives. There's the beautiful project in the group. So I know you are going to be inspired. Have a great Saturday, have a great weekend, and well, see you online. Kiitos vielä kaikille suomenkielisille. Jos on tosiaan kysymyksiä, niin ei muuta kuin vaan jättämään niitä tuohon, niin rupean käymään kohta läpi. Kiitoksia kun tulitte, ja hyvää ystävänpäivää jo pikkasen tälleen niin kuin, <laughs> etukäteen. Kiitos Karita. Thank you, Tina. Thank you, Vasilis. Um, yeah, I actually didn't say Jutta where the boxes are available. These are from a local craft shop, craft store. But I'm not sure if these are the last ones because I needed to do one of the steps. Just different, different base because I only had two boxes. And because of time limitations, then I would have needed a third one, but I didn't get it, so... But uh, I'm sure that craft stores might have something similar. Or if you just have a box, then you can create this rounded dimension thing. And these, for example, here are just hot glue. So you can then kind of alter a normal box to resemble more like a book. Okie dokie. Then have a nice evening or day or night, <laughs> depending where you're from. Thank you and see you again. Bye!